Lecture 13.3, Nonlinear System Characteristics. Characterizing nonlinear systems can be challenging without the tools developed for linear system characterization. Unfortunately, as we have found, they do not apply. However, or many of them don't. However, there are ways of characterizing nonlinear systems, and we'll here explore a few. First, we'll look at those in common with linear systems. As with linear systems, the system order is either the number of state variables required to describe the system or, equivalently, the highest order derivative in a single scalar differential equation that describes the system. Similarly, nonlinear systems can have state variables that depend on time alone or those that also depend on space or some other independent variable. The former uh, lead to ordinary differential equations, ODEs, and the latter to partial differential equations, PDEs. In this class, of course, we've, we're focusing on ODEs, um, lumped parameter modeling, where we don't have spatial distributions of our variables, just time distributions of our variables. Equilibrium was already considered in Lecture 13.1. Um, however, we're going to um, return to that a little bit when we talk about stability now. In terms of system performance, perhaps no other criterion is as important as stability. Although we no longer have the luxury of eigenvalues from which to analyze it, the stability of Lecture 5.2 and Chapter 5 is sufficient for nonlinear systems and is repeated here. So if x is perturbed from an equilibrium state, x bar, the response x of t can 1 asymptotically return to x, 2 diverge from x, um, and 3 remain uh, uh, perturbed, return, perturbed uh, or oscillate about x with a constant amplitude. So in this case, so asymptotically return to x, we call these um, um, when, when they um, when all of the um, uh, perturbed possible states around the uh, uh, in some neighborhood of the equilibrium state do return asymptotically we call that a stable equilibrium um, diverge we call that unstable so even if um, even if one uh, possible state in the neighborhood around the equilibrium will not uh, return and will diverge from the equilibrium. We call that unstable. And finally, um, remain perturbed or oscillate about the equilibrium with a constant amplitude. And we've called this in the past marginally stable. Okay. Notice that this definition is actually local. Stability in the neighborhood of one equilibrium may not be in this, uh, may not be the same as in the neighborhood of another. So, just because one equilibrium in your system is stable doesn't mean that they're all stable. Other than nonlinear systems' lack of linear systems' eigenvalues, poles, and roots of the characteristic equation from which to compute it, the primary difference between the stability of linear and nonlinear systems is that nonlinear system stability is often difficult to establish globally. Okay, so we can look at an equilibrium and we can say, okay, this is a stable equilibrium, the neighborhood around it is stable, however, um, saying anything about the entire system is, is more difficult. Using a linear system's eigenvalues, it is straightforward to establish stable, unstable, and marginally stable subspaces of the state space. So one way to do that is to transform to the eigenvector basis, the eigenvector basis um, that corresponds to eigenvalues that are stable is going to be the, um, the stable subspace. Those that are marginally stable will be the marginally stable subspace, and then the, the um, uh, unstable eigenvalue, eigen, eigenvalue, eigenvector pairs uh, will correspond to the to the not uh, uh, unstable um, subspace. For nonlinear systems, no such method exists, so that you can't do 
a simple uh, basis transformation into the eigenvector basis because there are no eigenvectors defined. However, we are not without tools to explore nonlinear system stability. One mathematical tool to consider is Lyapunov stability theory, which is beyond the scope of this course, but has good treatments in Brogan and Chow Chow Brahm. Um, and uh, I will say that this definition is loosely based on Lyapunov stability theory. Um, it's more involved and thorough, though. Um, another tool is the graphical use of phase space, which will be introduced in chapter 14. Okay. Qualities of equilibria. Equilibria, i.e. stationary points, is another um, name that we give them, come in a variety of qualities. It is instructive to consider the first order differential equation in state variable x with real constant r, 13, 4. So uh, we've got the time derivative x dot equals rx minus x cubed. If we plot x dot versus x for different values of r, we obtain the plots in figure 13, 1. Okay. Um, so we have a negative value of r, a value of r being 0, and a positive value of r. And what we can do when we look at this plot, we, we see a plot of x dot versus x here. Um, and we're going to get to learn a lot about the system by looking at this, this plot. So let's, let's do that. By definition, equilibria occur when x dot equals 0. So the x-axis crossing uh, in figure 13.1 are equilibria. The blue arrow, so we saw some crossings, one here, one here, three in this one. Um, the blue arrows on the x-axis show the direction or sign of state change x dot, quantified by the plots. So you see on this one that x dot, we plot it, it's just this, you know, uh, r with a negative value, x minus x cubed. Uh, has this look to it. And we see that uh, we have a positive value of x dot here, which means that if we have a state that ha takes on value, say, negative 10 or something, um, it's going to have a positive x dot, which means that its time rate of change is positive, which means that it's going to move in the positive x direction, which is rightward in this in this diagram, so that's why we see this blue arrow pointing to the right. So that's true for all of x being negative with its function. Uh, similarly, if we're in positive x, we see that the value of x dot is negative. Okay, so that means that we're going to be the time rate of change of x is negative, therefore we'll move leftward, which is this arrow there. Okay, for both a and b, only one equilibrium exists at x equals zero, okay? Note that the blue arrows in both plots point toward the equilibrium. So in this plot too, when x is negative, x dot is positive. When x is positive, x dot is negative. So in both cases, we, we have x moving toward the um, origin, which is an equilibrium. In such cases, that is, when a neighborhood exists around an equilibrium for which state changes point toward the equilibrium, the equilibrium is called an attractor or sink. So we call this an attractor. Sink is another name for it. And this is another attractor. Okay. Um, it, you can think of it as attracting the state toward itself. Okay. Note that attractors are stable, so these equilibrium, um, uh, these equilibria are stable because if you were to start x and in the neighborhood of it, it will go to x um, bar, it will go to the, to the uh, equilibrium. Now consider C, okay, so the, the figure 13.1C. 
when r is greater than zero, three equilibria emerge. This change of the number of equilibria with the changing of a parameter, r in this case, is called a bifurcation. A plot of bifurcation versus the parameter is called a bifurcation diagram. We're not seeing one here. We aren't plotting versus r, but um, that's called a bifurcation diagram. You will see this in the nonlinear um, dynamics literature quite a bit. Um, the x equals zero equilibrium now has arrows that point away. And the reason for that is that we've got negative x dot when we have negative x. So when, when we have negative x, at least in this region. Uh, so if you have a state that's here, its time rate of change is going to be negative or leftward, and it's going to move away from this equilibrium. Um, similarly, if you're on this side, in positive x in this region, uh, then the time rate of change will be positive, and you'll move away again from the from the uh, equilibrium at the origin. Okay. Uh, and when that happens, when you have a neighborhood around an equilibrium, uh, that point that that pushes the the uh, state away from it then th this equilibrium is called a repeller or a source and it is of course unstable if you are right at the um, equilibrium value then you'll stay there forever but if you move a little bit left or a little bit right you're going to go away from the equilibrium value the other two equilibria here are stable attractors so if you go rightward from so positive x direction from um, this equilibrium value and you drop your state there say as an initial condition it'll move left if you go a little bit left it'll move right so it's going to go toward toward the state will always go toward these two um, equilibria consider a very small initial condition x of zero equals epsilon so we're considering an initial condition where we're just a little bit to the left or right of this origin here, okay? Um, if epsilon is greater than zero, so we start a little bit to the right of the origin, uh, the repeller pushes away x and the positive attractor pulls x to itself. So if you move just a little bit to the right, then this state will move all the way to this equilibrium value, okay? Uh, it will never return to that equilibrium, to this to the x equals zero equilibrium, the the repeller. Uh, conversely, if you have a slightly negative epsilon, so if you start a little bit to the left of this of this repeller, you're going to move leftward until you reach the the negative um, attractor. Uh, great. There's one more type of equilibrium. It's called the, or another type we'll consider. There are actually several types, but uh, these are the most common ones. Um, one which acts as an attractor along some lines and as a repeller along others. We'll see this type in the following example. So we're going to check out this example now. Saddle bifurcation. So consider the dynamical equation x dot equals x squared plus r, with r a real constant. Sketch x dot versus x for negative, zero, and positive r. Identify and classify each of the equilibria. So let's go ahead and do that. In the first case here, we'll say uh, um, when r is negative. So we're going to be plotting this. We're going to sketch a plot of x squared um, minus some, some uh, constant. So that's going to be... This is for r less than zero. We're going to have a an x squared um, parabola. It looks, you know, just like your x squared, but it's shifted down by r, right? Okay. So let's look at. Uh, it looks like there are going to be two equilibria. One here and one here. Um, Let's consider if they're stable, 
uh, uh, or unstable or saddle or what they are. So let's um, let's look here. If, if we're so we're plotting here, let's just remind ourselves we're plotting x x dot versus x, and we've got um, say we're right here the um, x dot is positive, so that means that we were going to move rightward. Okay, if we're here, x dot is negative, so we're going to move leftward. And if we're over here, um, x dot is positive, so we're going to move rightward. Okay, so using our our convention here. Um, this is an attractor, right? So I filled this in. The other one, um, and I should leave this empty circle here. This is a repeller, right? So this, uh, uh, if you if you um, perturb uh, x from this equilibrium value a little bit left or a little bit right, we're never going to return to this equilibrium, right? So this is an attractor. Tractor. This is a repeller, and of course we could find what those values are if we would like. Uh, we could do. Um, uh, we could just set zero equals x squared minus um, instead of r because r is the negative thing. We'll say like minus a or something like that, and then solve for x x equals the square plus or minus square root of a okay where r equals negative a so those are our those are our uh, uh, equilibria so we could maybe even use the notation x bar here for equilibria Great. So the one of those will be an attractor, one of those will be a repeller. Uh, the positive one will be a repeller, the negative one will be an attractor. All right, so let's also take a look at what happens when our, let's do our positive now. We'll wait for the zero one for the last one. So our greater than zero and our graph is going to look like it's going to be an x squared and it's shifted up. Um, and we're plotting x, x dot. Notice that we have no equilibria in this case. So two equilibria. And these are their values. Um, and this one we have no equilibria. And if you put uh, uh, x anywhere on here, so if x is here, it's going to move rightward, right? So not green, I'll use magenta. So we'll move rightward here, we'll move rightward a little less fast in here, and then we're gonna, out here we're gonna move rightward fast again. So um, in the, so for this, for this uh, system, anywhere x is, it's gonna move rightward, and it's never gonna have, it's never gonna rest, there's no, there's no rest in this system. Um, perhaps one could say that this is, uh, uh, a wicked system because there's no rest for the wicked right just to really hammer that metaphor huh okay now we have our third situation when r equals zero so in this case we have just your good old-fashioned x squared being plotted And we've got precisely one point at which 
uh, uh, we have an equilibrium which is at zero. Now when x is negative um, then x dot is positive so we'll be moving rightward and when x is positive x dot is positive so we'll be moving rightward again. So this is a little different than before so uh, we've got a we've got a an equilibrium that from this side is an attractor because if you perturb a little bit from the equilibrium to the left it'll return right you'll have the stable return but if you perturb a little bit to the right it'll never return it'll just go off rightward so sometimes we we put this, we'll put a, um, an attractor on this side and a repeller on that side in our little circle. Um, that's not a very standard notation, but it does appear sometimes. So we would say there's one equilibrium here, and it occurs when zero equals x squared or is equal to or x equals zero okay now um, this is precisely what we described here so it's a saddle point or a, a saddle equilibrium um, one which acts as an attractor along some lines and as a repeller along others so we've got an attractor on this side and then a repeller on that side so um, this is a saddle equilibrium. Great, attractor, repeller, saddle. Those are the ones that we're uh, going to see mostly in this class. There are other classes of them that are um, very interesting. Um, there's the very famous one called the strange attractor, which uses fractals. Um, so very fun. So if you're interested in, in digging deeper into nonlinear systems, you'll see that. You'll see chaos, um, which is great, great fun. So um, this is a, a saddle bifurcation example. Um, there are um, several cool types of systems. These are just two. I used this 13.4 and then also the example. Um, 13.5 equation. Um, those are just two that have some of these classic uh, types of equilibria showing up in them. And I encourage you to check out more of them. They're, they're a lot of fun ones. So um, yeah, so that's all we'll need though for now. And we'll explore these a little bit more in chapter 14.